Welcome back to the Fantasy Hockey Podcast weekend preview slash Wednesday thing with 10 takes while also a rest of season outlook type of thing. We have to fly Just by the episode. cuff. Just an episode. <laughs> we have to fly by the cuff or off the cuff. It's the playoffs. Things are different. That's just kind of how it works. Um, yeah. Wild times. Today is uh, 420. Didn't celebrate. Didn't celebrate 420. Didn't a lot of things happened today. So today is also, you know, we play Avicii in the intro. Today is the three-year anniversary of his death. Um, it's weird that we always say anniversary for that. I'm, I'm not quite sure why. but I've never said that. Important, Really? <laughs> I've, I've heard that said many times, and I don't know why I said it as well. But anyway. Anniversary of a death? Maybe I've, I've heard a lot of people say that, but I felt it was appropriate it's given, amazing. you know, we use his music. Um, the, which a lot of people, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you have no idea what I'm talking about because you might have never heard the intro song to our, to our podcast. And that's where it lives. Um, the Super League in soccer world got destroyed. Wait, wait, wait. Before, before you go into the Super League, we did, get, <laughs> we did get a review about us using poltergeist music in the oh, beginning. Yeah. <laughs> it is the Twilight Zone. Okay? It's Twilight Zone. Young bucks. It's it's definitely not poltergeist. It's not poltergeist. Poltergeist. Poltergeist good movie. I mean, come on. We recreated the Twilight Zone intro. It's not poltergeist. It's cool. It's cool. Maybe I got to upload that to YouTube just to the like just our intro. Um oh, yeah. so there's the Super League that happened. Um there was the Chauvin trial. It was a wild 420. Uh been a day it has been a seriously it's been a day it feels like from uh, the second i woke up there was news to right now i still feel like there's news you know what hasn't changed though patrick line still sucks um so that is no not way. news uh he's still he's still trash so is uh columbus so anyways let's jump into 10 takes uh the first one here has to actually kind of do with columbus and them being just trash Oh, people, I know people hate when I use trash. I haven't used it all season, to be fair. This is the first time I've used it all season, I think. That sounds like a bald-faced lie. <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> I've used it like two or three times, but I think this is appropriate. Columbus is trash. Um, anyways, Spencer Knight gets his first NHL win. So with that coming in, and he made... start, for that matter. And start in 33 saves to fantastic performance from Spencer Knight. Things are going to get really interesting. So the reason they're doing this is they can play Spencer Knight. I believe it's up to 10 games. I think it's seven, but I read 10 somewhere. So I'm not 100%. Nine, actually. I, I thought nine was a oh, number. Great. It could be seven. It could be nine. It could be 10. We have no idea. But somewhere. Uh, you know how contracts work. But somewhere in that ELC range. slide. Something. <laughs> and, and so it doesn't burn that first year. So they're able to I, play I him. I want to see it's nine games. The, the ninth game is the one that burns. Or the tenth game is. I thought so, too. I th- I don't remember. But anyways, that means that essentially there's no reason not to play Spencer Knight. You do get into an interesting territory here because to me, if you choose to play Spencer Knight, you're probably making a decision on who's your playoff goaltender. And it's probably going to be Sergei Bobrovsky. But that being said, I mean, dreaker has been incredible. And so I'm yeah. very curious to see how they handle this goaltender trio in florida because it really could screw over owners as someone who owns both drieger and bob this really really worries me going into the semifinals next week i really don't know what to do it could yeah. hurt drieger starts it could hurt bob starts they do have another back-to-back next week i'm legit worried on how this affects me semifinals and finals it's a weird side effect of this whole covid thing um you know the taxi squad essentially allows uh different different clubs to have what's essentially like what they do in the playoffs where they have their sort of black aces that kind of mm-hmm. just hang out and are, are available to be brought in that people don't know a lot about. And this isn't the first team that we've seen be able to utilize that to have a third goalie. You know, we, we're seeing the same situation in Carolina um, with Nadalkovich. So I'm actually, you know, now that we're seeing it happen in, in Florida, um, I, you know, I, I, I honestly don't really know why like uh, unless they they are just I, I haven't really seen if they have a chance to to win the division still but uh maybe they were just like like you said there's no real downside to it but mm-hmm. i am surprised that they would kind of bother in a way because like bob isn't playing well i can't imagine they don't play him in the playoffs trigger has been great so there's there's sort of like a, apart from like getting his sea legs in a way there's not a ton of reason to play knight except for maybe if you're worried about an injury maybe that's why getting maybe they just want to get him like used to the NHL 
play him a few games here and there. And like if Bob or Drieger or both or whatever, you know, yeah. Colorado situation happens, that Knight at least has some experience. Yeah, I to think step into the ring. I really think it has to do with just why not your top of the your top of the division right now. Um, your team is playing extremely well in front of your goaltenders at the moment. You probably want to see what Spencer Knight has. Also, give him some NHL looks. Why not? Right? It's essentially free looks in the NHL is the way I see it. Um, it rests Bob and Drieger. What I'm worried about is that Bob plays, Knight plays, Drieger plays, Knight plays, then Bob plays. If that happens, honestly, the message might be drop Florida goaltenders or spot start them yeah. when you can. Because I can't justify using two roster spots on players that don't start. Luckily, I have a bye week this week in the league where I have those two. But if you would have those two in another league, I am I am not envying your position. That sucks. I, I really don't know what to do. It's one of the biggest curveballs I've seen thrown in the playoffs in a long time from a goaltender perspective. How to play that triple-headed monster and have no idea what's happening is not fun. So, and especially because he played so well, that throws an even bigger wrench. I mean, if he gets slaughtered in his first game, completely different story. But the fact yep. that, uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not ideal. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, I mean, I don't want to rag on this season, but man, has it been hard to play fantasy this season? Yeah. Just with all, like, I, again, I mentioned that this is like, I can't imagine this Spencer Knight scenario right now happening if it weren't for the fact that they have like essentially a free use of him via taxi squad. Yeah. No. Um, I don't see them calling him up to eat up a roster spot if they can't store him away kind of whenever without like being annoying to him, honestly. Like yeah. the taxi squad's one thing, but like uh it's 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 weird. Um I'm I'm looking forward to dealing with it hopefully a normal season next season. Um but Okay, uh, let's broach the subject that I think has been well all over Twitter, certainly, but uh, one of the most contentious, contentious subjects that's come up recently is Patrick Marlowe uh, becoming the lead, the leader of all-time NHL games played. Um, I got to say, I saw some really weird, bizarre takes right when that that was like set to happen. <laughs> Canadian That's beat writer that, or I don't know if it's a beat writer or it was just a journalist in general that basically said if she was close to breaking the record for, I think it was like, like articles written for her publication versus the record, she would stop one short out of respect. And like, I, I'm hearing this a lot about like respect for Gordy Howe. And uh, it's, it's weird. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think he's a uh, Hall of Fame, personally. I think it's, I, I think, you know, getting the most games played is respectable. But I can't, I don't know. Maybe I'm showing my age here or something. I, I, I don't think he's Hall of Fame material, personally. Slightly lean that direction as well. But the the thing that I think is weird is like how much vitriol came out of it. Like how many yeah. people were like, for some reason angry at him or whatever for for continuing to play i mean hall of famer or not it's a feat to be able to play as many games oh, for as sure had. um you know he's 41 he's like you know you can make a real argument he's not nhl quality anymore in fact that's almost certainly the argument but yes. he's not that far off either um i mean the NHL look the san jose sharks in general are not really nhl quality so it's okay he's actually in the perfect place yeah yeah but uh, it's 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 interesting. I, I have a feeling that we're going to see quite a bit in the comments of people going both directions on on um, on whether he's you know a, a all star caliber or not. But eh. um, interesting nonetheless. Yeah. And I think like what what is he? He doesn't. There's no way he retires or something like that, or just you know like what? gives it up because of. It's just dumb to me. People, I, I think the, I think the vitriol towards his play is dumb. You're going to play until yeah. you want to play. It, I, if you have the privilege or the ability to play in the NHL, think about if you were in his shoes. You'd want to play as long as you can, too, probably. Some of you wouldn't. Look at Yager, too. Like, no one got mad at Yager when he kept playing. I mean, he sucked. He did at the end there. But no one got mad at him. Everyone loved it. People ate it up. 
I, I don't know why it's any different with Marlowe on a crappy team that's not doing anything. I, I don't get it. If they want you and they're willing to pay you, do it. It's the same with Chara. Uh, he could play till who knows when. It, it's not... Same with Lundqvist. He fell off too. We see it in other sports as well. I, I don't I don't understand why... It, it's such a... I don't know what it is. It, it bothers me. It's I don't know if it's entitlement or what to just... I don't know. It's just weird. It bothers me. You have no... Let them do their thing. It's just weird. I don't know. Anyways, uh, my next take on the third I, one. What do you actually doesn't, say? Doesn't Santa, maybe they don't anymore. What? They almost had a better shot. of. I think they might still actually have a better shot of making the playoffs than the Rangers do. <laughs> that I, I don't want to. But it's only because of how bad that division is. Yeah, that's that's all it is. Don't. I don't want to think about that. <sighs> David Quinn. Leave. Mm. Uh, so Columbus is last in the central below Detroit with equal games played. I don't think any of us expected that going into the season. That's crazy. It's insane to me. Like I, I've, I've, I feel like I've always kind of been a a Blue Jackets denier in that. Even yeah, sure. at the best of times, I was kind of like, I don't understand them. Like, <laughs> I don't see a whole lot of quality on that team. And like, okay, they played offensive game, but I don't know that that can take you as far as it's taken them. Um, that said, I did not expect them to be below Detroit. And actually, they they have one extra game played now after their loss to Florida. So they're like, definitely, well, although I think Detroit's about to lose as well. <laughs> we're recording this uh, <laughs> We're recording this Tuesday night and uh, and Dallas is up four to one. So pretty good chance that what you said is actually going to be the case. But it's just it's still kind of funny. I, I think it's just nuts that that roster is uh, last place. It's... And that's the thing is, I don't know if it's the roster or torts. Because I lean, I, I see both. I think it might be a little bit of both, honestly. I think it's the roster. I think the I loss mean, of Pierre-Luc Dubois is huge for them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I There's a lot that that is not so good. I mean, who do, who do they even have on that team, really? Like, who, who are they? I mean, yes, they lost Pierre-Luc Dubois, but like, who was their centers besides him before that, even? Like they, they just don't have centers. They have Roslavic, who was a middling, you know, bottom sixer when he played in Winnipeg. And then they have, you know, uh Texier Stenland, Kevin Stenland, who like nobody knows who that is. And then uh a new rookie. They don't have like, you know, we've ragged on a couple of teams, Minnesota in particular, for not having any center depth. But good lord. Like and they, and of course Max Domi, who's now a healthy scratch. But then you like you look down the wings as well. To me, they have essentially three good forwards, or that should be good on paper. Cam Atkinson, who you could even make an argument about. Oliver Bjorkstrand, who you probably can't make an argument about at this point. And Patrick Laine, who has a good shot, at least. Um, but beyond that, like none of the rest of their forwards are interesting at all. And then on defense, you basically have Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski and like a bunch of nobodies. Honestly. Like they I do not think they're a good team. I agree. I don't think they are either. I don't think they're on, a good team. On, in net, they had that, like, I don't know what happened last season with, with Corpus Allo and Merzlikens both being, like, Calder candidates. <laughs> Not Calder. Of, Ven, uh, Vesna. Vesna candidates. But it was it was weird. That was weird it just, stuff. It just, yeah, none of them made it any didn't sense. Add up. And they're just coming crashing down to kind of what they are, which is not, maybe not, maybe not as bad as they're being right now, but, like, I don't. I'm not convinced they should have been anywhere near being playoff contention anyway. I agree. I think they. I think they're right. I don't know if they're right where they belong. Maybe a little bit higher is where they belong. But I don't know. Detroit looks good at times. They've had good stretches. They have. Columbus they, yeah. is bad. Has had atrocious stretches and very few good stretches. Honestly. So. Yep. We'll see. Um, speaking of of trophies, mm. let's bring our boy up again, Jason Robertson. Um. I think we this must have been about a month ago when I or both of us called him for point per game pace rest of season. He's still yeah. he's doing beyond that by the way right now. And uh over the last month and change at this point. It's ridiculous. And he there's no signs of slowing down. Like I, I like I said before I still think that's the case. The funny thing is there's actually an avenue for him to increase because he doesn't get a ton of power play usage and if he did realistically that could go up. But at this point and I think this is starting to be suggested a bit more, like beyond kind of like our small audience and like a few 
here and there is on the internet or mm -hmm. you know on Dallas pages or whatever. Jason Robertson is clearly in the Calder in the in the Calder uh, Calder runnings. Calder <laughs> clearly right. Like at this point, Lankin and slowed down. Lankin is effectively out, in my opinion. Yeah. He's kind of like normalized. I agree. Yeah, he's uh, uh, Kakinen's out. Yeah, right? out. Uh, Nedeljkovic hasn't played enough games. I'm uh -oh. sorry. Like yeah. I'm not hearing that no. one yet, um, or at all probably. And then, so the goalies like Shesterkin as well. Like just not enough games. Sorokin, like all the goalies are like, can you really? If they're playing half not, the left a, of the games, like what a do you goalie do? is not going to win. I'm sorry, right. but it's not going to happen. Especially like, even if even if they were even if they had majority starts, right? Like if you yeah. had a Sorokin or a Shesterkin in a Lankin in position where they were taking majority starts and not being hurt. Um, I think even then, when you have when you have two forwards that are doing as well as yeah. we're having with Kaprizov and with uh, with Robertson. Like the flash kind of goes there, yeah. and that's you know you, you could say oh, whatever you want about it, but that if, means something for the for the trophy races. If the Rangers made the playoffs, then I might see the case for Shesterkin, maybe. But the yeah. fact that they're not making the playoffs, it's it's just not going to happen. Plus, he also got blown up tonight. I don't even know what his his. I don't know. Numbers are okay. I think. I his numbers are okay. They're good. Either. They're good. Yeah, they're not bad. But the, I don't know that Calder. No, Calder, not. Why? Calder, what is Calder, wrong with uh, you? Anyway, this is like when you um, used to say Toffoli. Yeah. God. Um, Rob, Jason Robertson, actually, he's moved past him now. Jason Robertson and uh, Kaprizov were both on the same point pace mm -hmm. up till today, although Robertson has tacked on two more with a goal and assist so far in the game tonight against Detroit. Uh, we'll have to see if, if Kaprizov responds to that, but he's their point pace is you know, effectively the same. But uh, but Robertson has not had anywhere near the opportunity that that Kaprizov has had until later in the season. Like they, he basically got shifted into this role of like, oh, we have, you know, all of our players out. You know, Hintz has been on and off. We've got uh, Radulov off. We had Ben off for a bit. Sagan's obviously not there. So he kind of just got thrust into a position that he wasn't supposed to be in, and it took him a while to get there as as different players moved in and out of the lineup. And Speaking then of. he just kind of was like, I am this player now. This is where I'm going to be forever. And they're like, cool. Yeah, he's got us to the playoffs. <laughs> Next season is going to be interesting for the Stars with the yeah. emergence of Jason Robertson. It'll be really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I feel like Robertson is doing this with essentially half of a season under his belt as opposed to Kaprasov's full season. Yeah. Like, obviously, he got points here and there not playing uh, on, you know, getting 20 minutes a game where he was getting. Yeah. But, uh, and, and he's not got anywhere near the power play usage that Kaprasov has. So. Yeah. You know, I think being hot down the stretch as well is going to, for the people that are voting on this thing, he's got to be getting eyes on that because Kaprizov, as well as he's as doing as well as he's done, has, has basically been flat. He's been like a 70 point per game player the whole season. He's not really been shifting up and down a whole lot. He's been fairly consistent. Um, and Robertson has basically been like this, like just going straight up towards the end, kind of like flat at the beginning. Um, and I think that's going to turn some heads. So I, I you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a shock if and probably when Robertson wins it. I think Robertson should win it. He's the top he of my book, in my opinion. I, although I think Kaprizov is also, obviously. Kaprizov, right? I, 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 think Kaprizov. I don't know. It sounds, That's, it sounds better. It really does. I'm sorry, but it sounds better. Anyways, next thing here. Speaking of rookies, um, I don't think I talked about this in the week preview, but I did want to mention it is the idea of picking up rookies in playoffs. So I'm thinking of like Cole Caulfield and that could be a mispronounce, honestly. Um, and then we also have kind of Spencer Knight who just came up and obviously had a great game. And I picked up Spencer Knight. Spencer Knight's a little bit different with the goaltender. I think, you know what you're getting a little bit like, you know, the quality of the team that's if it's Boston, for example, or it's Florida or it's one of those teams. And then they're playing in Columbus or they're playing Detroit. Like it's a little different versus a player. For the most part, I feel like my motto is stay away from rookies in the playoffs because usually they're not game changers normally. And there are exceptions, of course, but very often just because of the minutes alone that they're getting, they don't come in and be game changers. So normally I tend to stay away, and I think that we might be getting into some rookie situations here soon. You might see Cole Caulfield, although Caulfield is interesting because uh, with Price's injury, if they have to bring up Primo, they can't use Caulfield because of cap restrictions. 
So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, overall to me, like when rookies come up in the playoffs, I think we've saw this with Tolanen in the past as well. Uh, I tend to kind of stay away from rookies when it comes to playoff time. Yeah, I mean, I'm. it depends on how desperate I'm getting in general mm-hmm. <laughs> in the playoffs where I'll just take bigger and bigger risks. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I tend to agree. I feel like, I, I think the biggest mistake people tend to make in the playoffs is um, take making a big splash when it's not needed. Mm-hmm. Um, making a, a move for a player that's coming. I, I feel like Sagan, we could see being this person as well, where somebody sees him, you know, has a stash mall season, activates him for a player that has gotten them to the playoffs. Maybe somebody that you've held for the whole season because you're like, oh, Sagan is clearly better than Hornquist, right? Yeah. That feels like a decent analogy. That's a good one. Um, and you make that swap, and then Sagan just doesn't come back to form. He's been he hasn't played a single game, right? So mm-hmm. it just it's it's things like that that I I think can lose you championships. And if I were in a position uh, where I was stashing Sagan at this point um, to use him as, as an example, and it kind of ties into rookies in a well, uh, I would probably keep I would I would wait on him. Honestly, I would try not to activate him right away yeah. and see if I can see what his first couple games look like before I do that. Because the last thing you want to have happen is you activate Sagan, you drop Hornquist or whoever, and he plays, you know, 13 minutes on the first night. Like, that's a bad sign. This does segue perfectly into your next take here. Yeah. Um, This is something I've been doing and something I've seen quite a bit on on Twitter is uh, dropping high-value players in the playoffs. And it's something, it's kind of the opposite of this, but I think it's more warranted, especially as, you know, you start to lag behind in your matchup. Mm -hmm. Um, This is... Like this is a head-to-head league thing, um, although it can apply in roto leagues if uh, said player doesn't have a lot of games left. And that's this is usually when this happens. Um, you'll drop your high-value players. The guys that come to mind, the one that comes to mind most specifically is is Vladimir Tarasenko. Mm-hmm. He's been not great, like serviceable barely, I guess. But you know, this week in particular, he played two games. You know, he's he's playing Thursday and Saturday. Those are heavy game nights as well. There's a decent chance that you're going to be benching players and, you know, starting a guy who's been playing fairly mediocre against the best team in the league, arguably, in Colorado. So I I dropped Tarasenko because I can't see him helping me despite, yeah. like, the name value and despite the fact that maybe he's better than who I picked him up for or who I picked up for him. But the fact of the matter is, this is the playoffs. I'm not looking for the next eight weeks in front of me or something. I'm looking for this week and next next week and that's it. That's yeah. it. You know, that's finals. Maybe one more in some of your leagues. Yeah. So you, you got to, especially when somebody's not going to get you the, the starts that you need. If you're in a matchup that you don't think you can win, you have to make those, those bigger decisions and, uh, and, 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 you know, essentially game starts are king and they kind of always have been unless yeah. you have a, unless you have a start limit on, on your weeks. And another thing there, aside from just like big name value, also don't be afraid to drop highly rostered players. I think that's another yeah. area that people get scared of, right? I think I'm thinking of like Kadri, who's been awful uh, for yeah. a bit now, right? 66% owned. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 65% owned. Our boy Patrick Laine in the 77% still. You know, these highly owned players, I think a lot of times people are afraid of dropping someone who's 70 plus percent owned. But in a lot of situations, it can make a lot of sense because Netsoff, I think he's still highly owned. I mean, even Lankinen is someone to think about. Uh, there's a yeah. lot of good goaltenders right now, a lot of good backup goaltenders. And Lankinen, honestly, has completely fallen back to form. Um, just don't be afraid of dropping a guy that's highly rostered. You, you know, I, I have in one league, someone dropped Claude Giroux. Giroux's been terrible. That, that's a good yep. example of someone that should be dropped yet because that's off 73%. He has been playing well these last two games and a lot better. Um, so he might be a potential ad, but again, center only. But yeah, so I think when you look at it, don't just think about name value, but also, you know, be don't be afraid to drop high percentage guys that are, you know, kind of ruining things for you. And on on that note, I'll, I'll keep this going. I had a different one, different take, but I'm going to move this down. Um, I'm going to say that when you're looking at two players, if all things are equal, you want to drop the person that's not going to have a lot of starts going forward. Starts are king. So if you're looking at two guys, they're equal in value pretty much. Do take a look ahead and see not just what this week is, but maybe the next week as well. You're looking at quality of schedule. I talked about this on the week preview. You're looking at quality of schedule, who they're playing, and you're also looking 
a lot at how many games they have played and how they fit into your roster. Really go through each day and say, hmm, would I play this person over these other people? And take a look at where where you might fit them in, you know? So that's a really important part. Again, starts are king. And, and so I guess the point I'm making here is don't just you know, get married to the name of the player or how many games they have. Take a look as well the next week ahead because it might open up drop opportunities for you. If someone has two games early next week or two games really late next week, right, this week might be the time to drop them because you're not going to get any early games out of them next week. So just something to think about is look ahead. Don't just look at this week specifically, especially if you're ahead in a matchup. Be smart about your ads and drops because you could put yourself into a precarious situation going into next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, my next take is we finally had a team statistically eliminated on, uh, on the 17th Columbus. And that <laughs> it's Buffalo unsurprisingly. Ooh, okay. But um, what's interesting is that despite them being the first team to be eliminated, this was after the trade deadline. And this kind of ties back to, you know, talks from pre- uh, from previous episodes about vetoes and trades and stuff. And it's it's kind of why the trade deadline is set where it is. For somebody to be eliminated quicker than Buffalo was this season would have been really unlikely. Yeah. And uh, and that's that's you know that's how they position the trade deadline in such a way that that um, you know most teams buyers or sellers at least have some reasonable shot at doing something um, where it's not, you know, you're not haven't decided completely that you're going to tank or whatever. But I I mean, who knows what Buffalo is doing, to be honest. No one knows. um, They have been playing better. They have have been playing better. But um, I think it just, it kind of reinforces my thought and and thoughts that that we've kind of come to inclusion on in general of, of where we put trade deadlines in fantasy hockey. And and shifting that earlier in the season from maybe where is standard to kind of support the same thing. Um, I don't know that you know a trade a trade deadline being three weeks before the playoffs or something. What that really boosts, you know, mm-hmm. because yeah, there's going to be more trades around the deadline in general. But what good does it really make for for that deadline to be? when a bunch of teams have been have been eliminated and then you you wind up in this murk situation of like what are they trading for and like is this collusion and all that nonsense um like i don't see the the harm to the league of moving that up a little bit other than you know really trade happy leagues where people just want to trade all the time mm-hmm. i guess but even there like it doesn't it doesn't seem like the downside is big enough to to offset what it brings to the league yeah. so i'm i'm really going to be considering that for next season this season was so weird with it being shortened and all that so it was, it was tough to pick a deadline and as it is mm-hmm. but next season i'm definitely gonna be pretty cognizant of that of what it looks like how quickly can teams be eliminated if they're you know subpar yeah and when i say subpar i mean it not not benching or uh, not mismanaging their bench but just like bad teams yeah because if you're setting your lines you should do i mean points leagues are one thing but in cats leagues you should probably yeah. be able to week by at least a couple cats two three cats every every week and then um that should be enough to keep you in some sort of contention later yeah. on but yeah it's just something I want, I want to keep my eye on and make sure that like whatever i tell people to do next season or you know if people ask me how where they should set their how they handle deadlines and vetoes and things like that to uh to kind of point in a direction of where the trade deadline should maybe be placed mm-hmm. So my next point has nothing to do with that. It's just kind of interesting. So Micah McCurdy from Hockey Viz recently did a little bit of a study and looked into something I found really interesting. And I actually would have never guessed it was the case. Face-off percentage has nothing to do with goal differential. It has no predictive measures. If you have a better face-off percentage, it doesn't translate to a higher chance of winning, which is really interesting. I, I had no clue that you that could makes like no sense to me it makes no sense it's <laughs> wild to me apparently one of the why the craziest outliers was a game i think a few years ago he was saying maybe just two or three years ago i can't remember exactly um columbus won 10 to 0 against montreal with a 44 percent face-off win percentage so it's really interesting i don't know 
if that actually applies anything to fantasy. Um, but it was just really fascinating to me that face-off win percentage doesn't translate at all to goal differential, um, which you would think it does. Say you, if you have a better face-off win percentage, you'd think that that would lead to more goals, right? Because you win more in the offensive zone, etc. But the case is you actually don't. So that was really interesting to me. I, I would have never guessed that that was the case. They should just have the players be just wherever on the ice and just have the ref throw it. That'd be fun. Or have each have the two teams. No more face-offs. Yeah. Have the goalie kick it with his pad. They That's just a, shoot it like with just, a cannon. Yeah. That that too. Uh that'd be a interesting idea. That's what that's an idea. I anyways. <laughs> two pucks. That's what they should do. Two pucks in a cannon. On the ice at all time. Two pucks in a cannon. <laughs> Quite the idea, man, you are. So um last take here. Uh, is I, I get a, uh, often I get questions of which goalie to start. And I think this is a bit of a loaded question depending on how you're asking it because sometimes you need different things. Like which goalie to start when you need a win is different than which goalie to start when you need saves, which can be different than which goalie to start when you need save percentage. All these things, those three scenarios, like there's overlap, but um, they they could be three different goalies in a given mm-hmm. night if you had all three. Um, it really depends on, you know, matchups and no matchups in general, but specifically, I feel like I get a lot of questions about who should I play if I'm looking for a win. And I think the easiest thing that everybody should be doing, if you're looking for who, if you're chasing a win, uh, and especially if you're looking to stream a backup or whatever, uh, or, you know, play your Saturday, one of three goal or two of three goals you have, you know, you're benching somebody use a sports book. Yes. Use, you know, whatever sports book you trust or use something like Odds Checker or Odd Shark or any of those those aggregates. Um, use a sports book. Like it is their livelihood to get those lines as close to right as possible. So if a sports book tells you that a certain team is likely to win, especially if it's close to game time, the closer it gets to game time, the more accurate those lines are going to be. Um, you should believe it, essentially. So when I'm personally, if I if I have, if I'm in a situation where I have three goalies and I need to start two of them, and I'm benching somebody, and I need a win, or even when I need like a save percentage or something, I will kind of like take my own personal bias out of it and go look at the books and see what you know, what essentially the general consensus is saying, what 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 sports betters are saying, and um, and go with that. And you know, more often than not, you're going to be right because if that's not the case those books are going to start losing a lot of money pretty quickly. So um, my personal favorite is Pinnacle. I think their lines are the best. Mm -hmm. So Pinnacle.com and just, this is not like an ad or anything. Like I can't even play there. So it's just, uh, I think their lines are usually pretty on point. Yeah. So if you go there, you find a favorite, uh, find whoever is the most favorited, and that's who you play. Pretty simple. Easy. Easy Easy, peasy. Yeah, I do that a lot too. Like today when I was, deciding whether to pick up Spencer Knight or not versus Bernier. I pretty much just looked at a book and immediately was like, okay, could go yeah. horribly wrong, but I mean, whatever. The odds are in my favor, kind of. It went quite well for you, it turns out. It did. It went fantastic Bernier's getting me. lit and uh, Spencer Knight had a really good game. It was a gamble for sure, uh, but my thought on it was it's Jonathan Bernier and the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, I could be, if I were dropping like a different goaltender, I think I, you know, would have thought about it more, but the fact that it was the Red Wings, I was like, eh, how bad can it really go? Okay. Bernier got pulled. <laughs> yeah, he did. So I, I did pretty well there. I'm glad I dropped him. That would have ruined a lot of things for me. So let's move on to the rest of season outlook. Let's talk about a few players that we like and also players we don't like. So first off, one person I really like actually that I would pay attention to is Jake Ottinger. He's been lights out for the Dallas Stars. I know they have Kadobin as well, but this is a really, really important stretch coming up. And I don't think they're going to rely on one goalie. I think they're going to go with the hot hand as we continue. And they do have some back-to-backs coming up next week. I think they have a back-to-back against Nashville early in the week. Unless that's Florida who has that. I don't remember. One of them do. Uh, but Dallas does have a back-to-back early in the week next week. So when it comes... I think it's Carolina, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. It might be Carolina. Uh, but it's an yeah. Im- incredibly important stretch for Dallas. And they do have a pretty decent defense in front of him and he's been really really good so jake ottinger is one there's a lot of good goalies to watch for i think uh, sorokin 
might be one that's going to get more starts potentially if they want to rest for Lamov. Uh, we might see Georgiev get a few more starts here because it's, you know the range is going to be eliminated here soon and you don't yeah. nearly need to rely on Shesterkin. Um, Spencer, there's a lot of really good goaltenders that you could potentially pick up. So there's a strategy, honestly, in my opinion, of starting the week with like no goaltenders or just your normal ones and waiting until the end of the week to pick up uh, some spot starts if you happen to need that, especially in a Cats League. I think that could be a really interesting strategy because there's just so many options right now of who to play. Yeah. Sticking with goalies, um, we got Carey Price's back in concussion protocol. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, you know, it's it's not a re-aggravation to an injury because that was not his previous injury, but uh, he's going to be out for a couple of games, it looks like, minimum. So, um Jake Allen, once again, you know, if you're looking for that that starter on a decent team, he's back to being available. He was heavily dropped. I think he's below 30% rostered at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody I'm looking at in a couple of leagues where I need a goalie. So, uh, and actually, you know, I assume you guys won't be hearing this to Wednesday. So if you have same day ads, that's great, I guess. But um, Montreal also plays off nights this week. So they're playing Wednesday and Friday. Well, also Saturday, but hopefully, you know, you'll get Allen starts on Wednesday and Friday and be able to play your other two goaltenders on Thursday and Saturday to maximize your starts because it's not the easiest week to maximize starts for mm -hmm. goaltenders this week. So, you know, good luck if you're going that direction. Um, I, every time I've ever rostered Jake Allen, it's been horrible for me, but... Seems like it's worked out for some people this season. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of season it's been, pretty much. Uh, on goaltenders, I also like David Riddick. Pay attention to him. Uh, it seems like the goalie situation in Toronto is completely up in the air. They clearly acquired Riddick for a reason. Um, I kind of warned this about Jack Campbell early. He was really hot, and now he's fallen off a cliff. Um, the sample size was just really small, in my opinion, and... You couldn't guarantee. So I hope you didn't build your goalie tandem around, you know, Jake Campbell going into the uh, going into the playoffs because it's not looking too hot right now. And I mean, even Riddick is not a great option, but just interesting for wins more than anything. Wins is really the only thing I'd look at him uh, for. Yeah, I mean, I still like Campbell to be honest, but I I think the acquisition of Riddick says more about anderson who i believe is practicing now yeah but uh but i think yeah whatever i think it made sense for for toronto to do that or jack campbell um, not jake why was i saying jake campbell is jack campbell um yeah i mean jack campbell's had a brutal just brutal recent games he had since april 5th he had an 897 then a 941 then an 844 875 when he got, got yanked then 875 in his last game my my theory is that they figured him out. It just took a few games, but they figured him out. Hmm. That's what I think. Um, as far as a couple of guys that I like, I feel like Nikita Gusev is mm -hmm. probably my most interesting. I, I I think like among the the community that listens to podcasts, he he's not exactly, you know, a hidden gem or anything. But he is only ten percent rostered on Yahoo right now. He is playing top line, top power play. He is picking up points. He's shooting. He's playing a ton of minutes. Um, I think he's one of the. He's probably the best ten percent or 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 less owned or rostered players. I think that you know, especially after the game tonight with Bennett and Duclair both having quite good games, that we're going to see them really pop up again with Bennett. You know, kind of being good lately. Mm -hmm. I think they're okay, but their lack of power play exposure and their sort of like whatever minutes. I don't really know that I trust that will keep up. Yeah. It sure seems to work better as their second line than than the, you know, the Wenberg whatever centered line did. But um I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much stock in that and I do think that the the right answer especially in points leagues is Gusev. Now Bennett has has, you know, his own values in banger leagues, uh but Duclair I think is clearly the third option between the three of yeah. them. I do like Duclair a lot. Um, I'm going to say actually that one, I don't have this on my script here, but one person I'm actually thinking of dropping here is Matt Barzell hmm. going into playoffs. So he's a pure center. 
There's a yep. lot of centers that are doing or center eligible players doing well. You have Nick Benino who's killing it. I'm pretty sure he's he's center eligible if I remember correctly. I'm, I, yeah, I, he is. I, I like doubted myself for a second. It was Josh Norris who's killing it. Um, there's a lot of players in the center position that are doing really well with much better schedules than the Isles. The Isles have two Washington Capital games this week. The next week, they only have three games, all on heavy days. So that's the center position, right? And and the center position is, to me, one place that you could really um, make up ground, potentially, if you drop from there. And I think that the center position is also one that you can always find good centers on the wire that are doing well, just because the center position is so deep. Uh, so you can probably find good players, you know, because Netsoff is out there and such, even though Kuznetsov doesn't have a great schedule next week either, um, Isles and Pittsburgh twice. But then you look forward, and, I mean, there, there's not a lot to look forward to for the Isles. The last week, the finals is the only week where it would suck, for, at least for me. It's two weeks out from now. They have two Buffalo games, two Devils games, and two of them are off nights. So that's the only hesitation I have with Barzell. But when I think about it, you have to get there first. And right now, Barzell is dead weight. He hasn't been doing very much for me. Uh, not enough, at least, from the center position when I could be doing so much more from there. Um, you know, Only four points since April 9th. Uh, it's just hasn't been good enough. His minutes are kind of in the 17. I'm a little worried that with the acquisition of Zajac and um, and uh, Palmieri, they're going to be a little bit more even lines now, which it seems like they're kind of doing. Although, you know, Mar- Barzell has been all over the place. He has played a lot of 17-minute games and such. But it does seem to me that Barzell does best when he gets those games with a lot of minutes. He did have a five-point night in a 17 42 game 17 minute 42 second game but still um i just for me barzell gives me pause uh he's one of the one players that i'm looking at my roster and thinking he's a big name guy but you know what he's not a game changer he's only been that in this season a few times very rarely in stretches has he been kind of this big game changer uh so and he did have five points against Washington last time they played, so I could be entirely wrong, but that's just one area that I'm looking at, and I'm thinking, okay, cent- the center position is the one where maybe I want to make a big change. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like, especially in Cats leagues, Barzell winds up yeah. being overdrafted. Um, in points leagues, like, whatever, but yeah, it, it, it does feel like he's a little bit um, kind of overvalued, but... Yeah. Um, my last bit here is that I think Buffalo players in general, and you touched on this the last time we were on a show together, which feels like forever somehow, but yeah, um, with people really avoiding the the bad teams late in the season. But uh, despite this most recent game here Tuesday night where they were shut out by Boston 2-0, Buffalo has been playing quite well, and there's actually some decent, op- decent options on that team. Um, yeah. Some players we've talked about before, Casey Middlestad, I think, is the top of the list to me um but he's actually what they play boston a lot they play boston this week and next week they play next week again yeah Yeah. i talked about this in the week preview they play boston the rest of this week and then they play them twice next week it's just a lot of bostons i don't like that i'm out they have boston twice next week and the rangers once yeah I'm just I I don't I'm not that worried about it honestly. They got shut uh, out tonight against Boston. They did, but I think that middle stat is the one I'm most interested in. Um, I mean, we've talked about it before. Yeah, he, he has struggled against Boston, of course, but he's been good against basically everybody else. And I think that like I don't think Boston's impenetrable or anything. Um, but and another guy that I think has been overlooked lately is is uh Sam Reinhardt, who has been dropped quite a bit i think i think basically everybody on that team got dropped after eichel was like essentially out which for good measure i mean yeah. everybody went cold for most of the season honestly but uh between middlestat and reinhardt uh and olafson to an extent and as well as darlene honestly darlene has been pretty good too and he actually should be picked up in quite a bit of leagues at this point um as you know he's kind of come back to what we hoped we'd get from him even even against boston but um yeah, I just think there's some options there that are being overlooked. But again, yeah, their their next week isn't great, unfortunately. Even if it weren't against Boston, they've got only three games and they're on heavy game nights. But 
Um, you know, when you're really in a, in a deep league and you're looking for something, you know, I was in a 300 person league and middle stat was still available. It's there's in leagues like that. You're looking at guys like Rudolph's Balsers and stuff like that. Yeah. who are just not, not very available. So. In, a, in a league like that, I buy it. I think it's in, it's in shallower leagues that I, I, I just don't want any, I, I don't want anything. Yeah. I mean, the, the week being so bad is not yeah. great, but their final week of the season. Also the matchups aren't great, unfortunately, no. but at least they have four games and two of them are off nights. Yeah. So if you're in that final week, I could see them being relevant again for you. Yeah. So my last, and uh, nobody's gonna really pay attention unless they blow up in the next few days. My last bit here, drop line. A. I, I don't know what I need. I don't know what he needs to do to get more drop than he is. He should be a sub 50% owned guy. No one should be holding yeah. on to line A right now. There's no reason to hold on to line A. I don't No. That's it. That's all I have to say. I feel like we've said it so many times and he's still owned. I, I don't get it. I've don't. got no answers for you there. I am I am out. Oh, you're out. Okay, Words. so there you go. So then that's the episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. These playoff episodes get a little weird. We just kind of talk. So hopefully it's some of what we say is helpful. Um, we're almost to the end here. Two more weeks. Two mm-hmm. more weeks. It's been a wild season. It's been fun. It's been a lot. It's been fun. Has been. Has been. So thank you for listening or watching, and we will catch you next time. Yep. Thanks for listening.